You're listening to episode number 16 of the Wise Photographer Podcast. I'm so excited for today's guest. Ashlyn Carter is a conversion copywriter and marketing strategist specializing in wedding and creative industries. She traded in her Fortune 500 clients in corporate marketing to bring in more than seven figures in her business writing for creatives like Jenna Kutcher, Beth Kirby of The Local Milk, Julia Solomon, Caitlin James, Hilary Rushford, Laura Casey, The Cultivate What Matters Shop, and so many more. Her launch funnels have generated upwards of $500,000 in revenue for her clients. She's been a contributing editor for Creative Live, ConvertKit, and HoneyBook. She's also been featured in places like Southern Living, Style Me Pretty, and so many more. Ashlyn lives in Atlanta and convinces her hubby and their little baby boy to go grab Margs and Tacos weekly. I wanted to invite Ashlyn on the show today to talk about why words matter. Ashlyn is such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to how we can use our words, but more specifically, our stories on our website and in our marketing to help connect us and book our dream clients. If we can't articulate what it is about our services and our experience that sets us apart from the rest of the photographers in our area, then we are forced to compete for clients on price alone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into this interview. Welcome to the Wise Photographer Podcast with your host, Chelsea Wise. Each week, Chelsea is bringing you the best tips and tricks to help you create a joyful, profitable, more purpose-filled photography business. Chelsea is a wife and mom of two who has built a thriving photography business in her tiny hometown in Western North Dakota. Without further ado, Here's your host, Chelsea Wise. Hey guys, I'm so excited to have Miss Ashlyn Carter on the podcast today. Um, so Ashlyn, for those who don't know who you are, can you give us a quick introduction and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yes. So um, hey, I'm so excited to be here, Chelsea. Um, my name is Ashlyn Carter and I work just with creatives as a conversion copywriter and a launch and brand strategist. So um, that looks like a lot of different things, but mostly I work with words all day, every day um, with entrepreneurs in the creative industry. So um, that's what I do. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm married with one little kid. And um, yeah, just I, I love work so much. I love this industry. Um, work with so many photographers, both as students and as one-on-one -on -one clients. And um, yeah, I just I'm so excited to get to answer you know anything that. Uh, kind of, I know our conversation will meander, but this is just, it's the coolest job that I'm so grateful to have and um, hopefully get to help and serve some people with it. Awesome. I love that so much. Um, I think I've been following you online for like a little over a year now. And I was definitely, I was introduced to you through Jenna Kutcher, which I feel like everyone was, right? Yes. Um, but I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Um, I think we as creatives and especially photographers, we can kind of have these like mental hangups when it comes to writing. Um, I know this is definitely something that I struggled with in school, like back in high school yes. and college. And I think I kind of really put myself in this like identity box that I just, I wasn't a good writer. And um, it wasn't until like my husband got sick mm -hmm. and I really just let all of my guards down and just shared our story just not really trying to polish anything mm -hmm. up, but just kind of like getting it out there. And that was such mm -hmm. an eye opener for me um, to kind of look back and see how much that like my words mattered to other people and like kind of prove to myself that I can write. Um, so full disclosure, um, I am a copywriting for creative students and I'm about halfway through the course. <laughs> um, I just get so excited. And then, like, you want to... <laughs> if you want to try and finish a course, invite someone on your podcast. <laughs> that means the world. Well, and then I'll tell you too, we're redoing a lot of the templates. So I'm actually glad you haven't been using the, have you been using the templates yet? Uh, not no, not yet. yet. Good, good. No, you're just right on okay. track then. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but I've learned so much and like going through that course, like I feel like it was, it's just been amazing. Like I'm not even finished all the way and I'm like so excited. Um, so getting to have you on this episode, like so gosh darn excited to have you on here. Um, but I think um, one of the things that I learned like that really stuck, stuck out to me and was kind of like the most reassuring is that 
it's hard to kind of find your own brand voice and your own brand story. Like we're so close to it that like we can't see the outside of the label from the inside of the bottle, if that makes sense at all. Never heard that. I love that. So true. <laughs> I, I can't remember where I heard that one, but it was a good one. That's good. Job. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I wanted to kind of ask you if you can kind of explain the difference between what a brand voice is and what a brand story is. Because I've seen both of these things kind of floating around. And until I took your course, I didn't understand the difference between them. And I was just kind of wondering if you kind of break down what those are. Absolutely, Chelsea. So good. And I was like, like imagine <laughs> making notes when you're talking, because I feel like there's so many nuances to what you said that are so important. I think you're, you're not alone in that figuring out the difference in those two. Like it, it yeah, it's like kind of the same when you like start your business and you're like, wait, I need to be doing like cost of goods. I need to figure out that, you know, there's, there's these things that you feel kind of like, I should probably be able to figure this out, but you've never done it before. You can't, fought yourself for that. And I think a lot of people label themselves as like being good at this or bad at this. So I hear that all the time. I love that you just openly admitted that. And I think you touched on the value and the importance of sharing your story and like getting it out um, because like it doesn't have to be perfect, but it probably needs to be shared. And like the way that you have been so open about what you and your family went through is um, so admirable. So um, the tools being like voice and story are just like tools that have helped you get that out, right? So the way that I see um, the difference in the two, they're both vehicles to communicate the overarching brand message. Uh, I think a lot of times, especially as creators, when we think branding, we think like uh, our, just, our brains go to the visuals. And I don't know if you've seen me do this, Chelsea, sometimes in the Facebook group, we'll have, you know, a student or something say like, you know, I do branding for entrepreneurs or whatever. And I'm like, you do like maybe the visual branding like branding is a big word to say that you do for some that's like saying like I do finances for creatives well do you do the bookkeeping do you do like consulting would you do you know like what part of it do you do um and it's the same way with branding so if we look at if your message is like the what you're trying to communicate story and voice just become how like those are just tools to get it out like um and figuring out like actually pinning and putting that down, I think is the best. Um, again, it comes back to like the audience that the the realm we're both in, where craftsmanship like is so important to creatives. I think that that's why there's such value in like taking the time to write stuff out and workshop it and figure it out on paper because then it's so much easier to communicate. Um, so as far as like figuring out voice, that's just the tone and the syntax and like. The, the sound, the rhythm, um, the word choice, and then story. And we can park on story for a while, but I do want to demystify story a little bit because I think a lot of people hear the story and they're like, well, and, and the hard thing is, Chelsea, like you and I both have, like, especially you have this, like, you have a crazy life story, you know, like you have something. And I think that some people look at that and they're like, well, I don't have, it's kind of like when you hear people's like crazy testimony and you're like, well, Salty, the singing praise book came to my church when I was seven. Like, I don't, I had nothing, you know, like that's not cool. <laughs> so I think sometimes people hear a brand story that's so dramatic and they're like, well, I don't, I don't have a story. Story is just a vehicle and it can be something as simple as an anecdote or an analogy or, you know, a moment in time that happened in your kitchen where, you know, your kid said something and that like that is a type of story. And so there's um, we can get into too. there's types of brand stories that I do recommend that everybody has in their back pocket. We can talk about that. But I do want to say, like, even if it's just weaving story into your email newsletter each month or your Instagram caption, um, don't don't worry. It does not have to be this like life changing hero's journey every time you try to figure out how to use story. It can just be, um, it's just as simple as trying to help people put them in a moment and let them see something um, that you've been going through or went through, even if it lasted for a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. I think I've had a hard time because I do have like this huge hero story and like, I'm trying to kind of excavate a little bit more to find some that are not quite as big because I feel like I have a hang up of feeling like everything has to be so big. Yes. Um, and I really appreciate that you said that like it can be those little moments, those like small things that just are like little light bulb moments that really did make a difference and not something that like was life changing. <laughs> yes. And Toby, I've felt like that too before sometimes like 
yeah, if you do have a crazy story that led you to what you do as a photographer now or whatever, sometimes it is kind of hard to be like, well, that's, I'm like a one trick pony. Like that's my, that's my shtick. I don't have anything else. And you totally do. Um, so I think there's both sides of it um, are kind of difficult at times to see. Awesome. So do you think that like brand story and brand voice are like developed at the same time? Or is it something that like you kind of work on one and the other one kind of follows along with it? Or how do you kind of suggest that people like approach the two of those? Because they, they're different, but they're combined, right? I love it. Well, yeah. And I think that well, like Instagram, like people want to know like, yeah, make Instagram better. And it's like, well, there's, there's a problem underneath that. Sometimes that's how I feel with the voice. I'm like, yes, it is important, but there's something under that that's actually more important that we need to figure out. And that is like what your audience is saying and, you know, like how we merge those two things together. But I do think voice is one, it's probably because too, when you start out your creative entrepreneurial journey, you're DIYing everything, you very quickly are you're probably, you're not even using story as much as a vehicle. First, you're using voice. You're trying to like, you're trying to set parameters in place. You're reaching out to those clients for the first time, trying not to sound like a robot, but trying to sound cool. And like, you want to, you know, you want to go get coffee with me and like, I can be your photographer. So voice is like the first, I think like fork in the road where you actually realize when you're running a creative business, like, oh, shoot, I'm writing a lot <laughs> all the time. And now I have to figure out like, what do I want to sound like? Um, so I think that's why voice comes into play first, but very quickly on the other side of that. Um, and when I say story, and I, I mentioned there are some that I think everybody needs. I think you need your origin story, like the the thing that made you realize that this is something that you're passionate about. You need your aha story, the moment when you realized you could make a business out of that. And you need one good T testimonial story, O-A-T, if you forget this. Um, that's how you remember them. But like having that transformational story, whether it's your transformation or a client's transformation, um, that, like that, like that hero's journey story is really good to have in your business. I would recommend it be a testimonial um, just because that's something that can help in your marketing a lot. Awesome. Um, so are there any, um, you kind of said like the three stories, can you kind of kind of go over like what those are and like how people can kind of find or develop their own, like excavate them a little bit and kind of dig down any like tools or anything for like finding those out? Yes. So, and I think like a great example. So to talk about first, like the origin story, it, that is like when you first recognize, I just think like, think back to the first time you realized you wanted to be a photographer or just saw that you were drawn to light. Um, that's really, it's a, for a lot of people, especially as creatives, it's childhood comes into play with that. Um, so that's, that should be like pretty easy to find. The aha moment is a little more difficult. So I'll explain it with an example. Um, you mentioned Jenna earlier, and I know one time we were laughing because she, you know how she, anybody that has followed her branding for years will know how she says, like, I started my business with a $300 Craigslist camera. And like, um, at one point <laughs> yeah. she said something like, take a shot every time, uh, or somebody commented and said, take a shot every time Jenna mentions the $300 Craigslist camera. <laughs> she like, snar she responded back. She was like, well, you'd be pretty tipsy, you know, or something. <laughs> but that it's like that girl knew what she was doing. She was marrying so much that concept over and over and she would weave it into her message that people knew that that's how she started her business. So that's kind of how you want your origin story to be. I think I talk about my journey a lot with um, having going from an eating disorder into what I do now. And it was something that um, just over time, people have heard it. And I don't, I don't like plan out when I'm going to talk about it every year, but it just making sure that you, as you grow and as you gain more followers and more people along in your business, um, that's why I think things like a welcome sequence, if you have an email list are important. So you can bake that in there. So you do introduce everybody to that moment where you thought, oh, I have a marketable skill that people will pay for and I'm passionate about it. So that's your, that's the aha moment. And then um, I actually am doing a YouTube video coming up on getting good testimonials because I have learned a lot this past year about getting good testimonials. We just paid a copywriting business to come in and just figure out two huge testimonials. I think we paid like 1500 for each package. I like went all in on this 
because I realized like we were pulling on myself. I just had so much to learn and how we could do a better job of it. Um, and I think like that's been a really valuable exercise for me, but always I, there's a, there's a YouTuber out there named Sunny Leonard Doozy. And I remember there's like one video where she talks about her weekly, ta- her daily tasks and she has them all down in one of her daily tasks. Like she's a big team, but on her list is getting testimonials. That's how important, like there's not somebody on our team that's going, she's constantly talking to her students, talking to her clients, understanding what could we've done better? What did we, what did you, what are your successes? Like how she is that dialed in to getting feedback and hearing how what she does changed people's lives. That spoke volumes to me when I heard that like, this girl with a pretty big team, you know, has this on her list every day. So those are those three stories that I recommend. Um, So what do you think is the number one mistake that you see creatives making when it comes to using words to kind of communicate what they do and like getting clients to book? Yeah. I feel like it's something that's so overlooked, especially in the photography industry. And like, I didn't even realize like how powerful it was until just recently. I love that. I think one thing that I notice a lot from, from being on the inside of businesses like, and I, I've got a ton of resources on website copy. Okay. So let's go the next step in the process, the next step in the funnel, so to speak, that inquiry process. I've just looked at so many inquiry response emails that I'm like, this is so confusing. Like there's, you have got the same way in a sales email, you give them like, you know, in email marketing, you typically have one call to action, one main call to action. And that email is like, the email is packed in a way. So you remind the person of their problem, why they're like agitating it a little bit. You're communicating why you have the solution for it and you're calling them to action. Like there's a process to it. And I think sometimes I would look at inquiry responses and it was like confetti exploded on paper. And I, you can't figure out like, as a, as somebody who have gotten the email would have been like, a of all, what am I supposed to do next? Like that's one one aspect that I've seen is they're so packed with like, do this and this and this, or if you want to do this, and if you click on this link, you can see where I've shot of this menu, but over here, you can also see, you know, like all of that. Or on the other side, I've seen where you're not, it's passive. You're not asking, like ask for it, move them to the next step in that process. Like do not ask them, you know, if you're interested or want some more information, just, you know, let me know. Like, no, you move them to that next step in the funnel. Like, how can we, you just keep move them down that pipeline. And so that's one thing that I see a lot um, photographers could do a better job with. Um, I think a lot of creatives could do a better job. And I, I think I, I noticed that because I did have calligraphy as the side to my business, you know, for so long and, and copywriting, but I was learning so much about email marketing copy that I had known from corporate, but I was looking now into the creative industry and I was like, wait a minute, like this is not, if email is email and email and people, people buy this, you know, like people, people don't change. People are looking for the same things and are going to have the same responses to, you know, different triggers that come up. So that's one thing that I think I've noticed a lot is there's definitely ways to make sure that along the journey of getting your emails, um, or working with you or booking with you that make sure that you're greasing that slide just as much as you're greasing them actually looking at your website or finding you on Instagram to your portfolio to reaching out. Keep making that slide really greasy all the way until, you know, wedding day and then keep going. Nice. I love that. So I think that's something I, I've definitely struggled with is like my first like initial booking or like inquiry email like it's like I have like the link to like my welcome pdf kind of thing that goes through like pricing and has like the portfolio but then I'm wondering like if like my last my last little bit has here if you want to read our family story here and a little bit here I'm like is that getting too busy do I need to narrow that down but I I feel like uh, that family story for us my about me page is like so critical to who I am as a brand that it like maybe you tone it down a little bit, but I see, I think it's still important for me to have that there. I think it needs to be there, you know, but maybe you want to like, you know, 
may and it depends i think it's it's different for every email you two call to action well three i guess like read the email read the story read the pdf read the story click or like let's schedule a call or whatever Mm -hmm. um that may not be too many i think especially if at the end you're saying like as a reminder you know like bullet them out you know like make it really easy for people to understand um confused people don't take like how many times do you open an email and you're like confused so you just close the email you know like Mm -hmm. that a lot of the reason we ghost on emails is because it just wasn't clear what our next step was um but one I ran into the same thing you did and so it's like how could I we ended up fleshing out that welcome pdf magazine it's it's 38 pages now there are definitely some like full bleed pages but I do want it to give a sense of like my story Mm -hmm. my team I'm because I'm anchoring the price all along the way like I know that our one-on-one services are expensive. I know that some of my programs are expensive. And so I want to make sure that they really understand they're seeing like testimonials. They're seeing all that stuff before they then get to the price because like I can't just shoot over my prices and say like, you know, decide if you want. I've got to help them anchor and understand why that price is what it is. And I think it's the same yeah, I have a best friend who's a photographer. And I was like, how do you communicate your prices? And she, she sent them like a one page PDF. And I was like, that's, you know, there's a lot more you could, you could, you could raise your rates like $3,000 if you were able to like show them the value more because she's been at that price point for a really long time. You know, I think you, that's one mistake I see. You'd ask that. That's one mistake I see. I think photographers, the work you guys do is just unreal. Like it's very difficult. I mean, everybody, people think they can do it until they try, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's difficult work. And I think if you can help your clients understand that, understand your decisions behind certain things and um, just, yeah, making that value clear, that's a mistake I see a lot because you guys are super talented. Well, thank you. (laughs) We'll get right back into the episode, but I wanted to pop in here right quick and let you know about something that I am so excited about. I've had so many of you reaching out to me asking about coaching. It has been so fun meeting you guys and diving into what's working and what's not working inside your businesses. This podcast was created to help you take your business to the next level, but sometimes we need a little bit more help. Messages from photographers across the country have been pouring into my inbox. I get it. You are sick and tired of being glued to your computer editing a backlog of sessions late at night. You are stressed out and overwhelmed and fear is holding you back from raising your prices and charging what you're worth. You are so sick of working with clients who just don't value your time and talent. I hear you and I understand and I am here to tell you that there is another way. There is a way to find more joy and less overwhelm in your business and you can stay inspired and excited about work. I am so excited to officially announce that I am taking on -on one-on-one coaching clients. I'm offering three coaching packages right now, which include a one-hour session, a full-day session, and a four-month-long mentorship. These coaching calls are great no matter what stage you're at or what you need help with. During your coaching call, we can go over anything and everything from marketing and branding editing, workflow, and systems, to pricing and mindset. Spots are extremely limited and are already starting to fill up pretty fast. I don't want you to miss out. You can have a joyful, profitable, and purpose-filled photography business, and I'm here to help you get to the next level. If you want to learn more about what one-on-one coaching looks like with me, You can head over to coachingwithchelsea.com to learn more about the packages and see if one-on-one coaching is right for you. All right, guys, let's dig back into this episode. I think one thing that I work on a lot with like my one-on-one coaching clients is really kind of understanding, um, getting like this, like getting away from like the scarcity mindset. Um, cause I think we can have like everyone and their cousin has a camera. Um, and so just understanding that like one, they can't do it the way you can because they're not in the same situation. And two, they're the reason that someone is hiring you is because of you and like either your connection with them 
and um, the the values that you stand for in your business and how like um, they want to be aligned with that as well. And sometimes it's you can have a pretty picture, but unless you can like articulate what that value is, I think um, a lot of photographers are just going to get stuck competing on price if they cannot like articulate what it is that makes them stand apart. And like, I seriously just want to send all of my one-on-one coaching clients through copywriting for creatives. (laughs) Like this is not a sponsored episode at all, (laughs) unless you want to, but. (laughs) I mean, but just see, we can like, for real, that's been fun. But I love that you said that about, you're right. Like the pricing you, it do, it can come down to just, yeah, looking at price to price to price. Yeah, unless they, they can, unless someone is like emotionally attached to you or you can emotionally draw in your clients, which sometimes you can do through, vi- your visuals are always going to support that. But I think the story behind it is what's really like anchors it in and like drives home Um I read the book Start With Why, and I know that's a resource that you have shared forever. And I feel like that why has been so, like, I know what it is, but it's been so hard for me to articulate that. And for me, it's um, kind of watching a trans or helping to like um, create a transformation so that we can celebrate the, um, the transformation. So like for me with weddings, it has been like, that's why for me for photography, it's been weddings that I love because I'm helping them transform from a bride to a wife and we're celebrating that with the wedding. And then um, for this podcast, it has been kind of helping um, busy moms go from kind of feeling overwhelmed and um, not able to move forward to having the tools to and making those wise decisions so that they can kind of transform into the business and life, like running the business and having the life that they want. So like that transformation is kind of where my why is. And it's been, I've had a hard time articulating how to do that. And I'm loving that I'm being able to dig into that with with this course and just bring it, bring what's in my head out. (laughs) I think you definitely, like when I was reading your website, when you talk about, it's a page, you're talking about like your story and what you went through with your husband and you're tying that into like how you supported things. And like, that's why systems are like, that's why you are passionate about helping other people understand systems because like you can, like if something like that were to happen, like at that that arc and that uh, made perfect sense to me. Um, so just know that you were probably closer than you think you are because it was very clear. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that because I haven't gone in and edited anything since then. I think it's oh, just no, like it's, yeah. working on trying to weave it all into like all my copy. But Amen. yeah. Um, Amen. Yes. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's been, I really think like this course has seriously made me like sit back and just evaluate how I want to show up for my audience, for my clients and like made me think like put words to paper, like a little bit more to get it like concrete. And I seriously think that this course has like propelled my like business, like really launched it off like so much that like, I'm so excited. Like this podcast is like, (laughs) And it's like little infant stage, but I'm so glad that it's that I'm going through this course at the beginning so that I can really move like where my heart wants it to go and just oh, help out yes, what I'm supposed to help out with. So, well, that I that's so kind. I think I think that's the power though that messaging. That's that's maybe why I love messaging so much because I do feel like it is and. You've probably heard me compare it to Fixer Upper before, but it's like you have to rip things down to the studs. You have to demo day it and pull everything down before you start. And I do, a lot of us as creatives, we we love the visuals. We love, you know, we do love that. But if it's like my mother-in-law always says, like putting the lipstick on a pig, you know, like it's not fixing it if we don't get down in the grit of it and figure out, yeah, like true 
truly define what our message is and get clear, crystal clear on that uncomfortably clear. Like it, it's not, sometimes this stuff is like setting goals for me. I'm like, this is actually not fun until like the last 10% of it. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> then I'm having a good time. But like, to me, that's what like good branding is as well. It's um a lot of, it's a lot of work and sweat. And then you get to a point where you're like, yes, that's where I wanted it to be. So um, I have experienced the same thing you're talking about. And um, just from like excavating and learning more about messaging with my own brand. So I, I completely echo what you're saying. I think it is, it's, it's only helped me get clear on my vision, even working with, you know, with my coaches when I'm like, they push me on things, you know, to really define, you know, define that more, define it more. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> but that is where, like, that's where things take off. So I, I hear you. I appreciate this course so much, like for real. Um, so you kind of talked a little bit about testimonials and you said you had a um, YouTube video coming out and we'll definitely link that down in the show notes once it goes live. Um, but is there any tips that you could give, like kind of especially towards photographers on how, like what goes into a good testimonial? And because I feel like that is something that's really huge, especially for photographers and like, especially brides, like wanting to like see what other people did or like what, how, what, how other people felt and that kind of thing. Is there any tips that you can give on like how to collect them or what should be in them? Yes. Three big tips just came to mind when you're talking. So the first thing I think is be on the lookout. Like I mentioned Sunny earlier and how she's always catching testimonials. Like, you know, you're, you know, the objections you get, you know, when somebody's like, either they wanted to book with you and then they went with somebody else. Like if you, you know, if you are able to follow up and ask why, um, or if you see that they're worried about price, why is it, you know, like, you know what the objections are. So the first tip is look for, how can you, how can you oppose that? How can you come against it and like answer it with a testimonial? So like anytime, anytime. So I, I, I was recently working with a client on a project and we we're like, what, what are the objections going to be? Well, some people, this is going to come out. Some people are going to be like, that's great. I know all that, you know, like good of you to offer that. I know all of that. So then a way that we're able to answer that is talk about how Elizabeth continues to do education in her business. And like, she continues to work with coaches. So we're able to like come against it with something like something tangible. So I want your testimonials to do the same thing. If you're always hearing, you know, like, uh, I just, I don't know if we need to do the like engagement shoot. My husband's really awkward. Like, let's just cut that off. Like, I don't actually need that. And you're like, no, that's like actually part of the pack. Like I, that's part of my process, you know, cause you need to figure out your jive with the couple or whatever your reasons may be, then that's an opportunity where you come in with the testimonial of somebody saying, I am so glad we didn't skip the opportunity to do the engagement session before. That was, that was one of the sweetest moments. It was probably the first time my husband and I got to really like enjoy the romantic moment of everything, you know, like try to, and I'm not saying bait your clients, but you kind of can't like bait them a little bit, asking them like, what was it? And that's the second tip I was going to say is like, get on the phone with them or get on a video chat with them. Um, there is, there's such value in emailing and obviously I'm a fan of that. I've talked about it, but I find my best, my best stuff when I'm having video calls with people and it can be awkward. And I know that it's like not always the most fun, but it's just, it's where the gold is. And you really don't need that, you know, you don't need to do a hundred of them or anything, anything like that. Three, do three or four, but challenging yourself to have a list of questions ready and let the conversation meander a little bit, hit record. So you can really focus on that conversation, but ask them about things. And then just keep in mind those objections that you hear or fears that you hear and try to see if you can like ask them about it in a way where you can get a response you can use. Um, so that's one thing I think that sometimes, especially I see it a lot with photographers, you know, like she was so easy to work with. She was so great. We love the photos. Okay. But like, can, what, what else we got? You know, like, is there something else there that we can kind of like, there's another angle here. I'm thinking, um, but the last thing I was going to say is definitely make sure it's baked into your process. So this would come back to like an email thing that, um, you know, a month or three months or however long after that you do have some sort of testimonial capture, um, in place in your workflow, whether it is 
a link to schedule a call with them or um, whatever, whatever you can schedule, go ahead and bake and get into the workflow. I know you're like a queen of Trello's and workflows, but that is something that I think a lot, and we've had moments in my business where like we got off on that, like it was in the workflow, but we got off on it. But that's something that's so important as a rhythm to have. Yeah. I think originally I was just sending out like a survey that was like automatically sending out like 50 days after the wedding. Um, but I think now I'm going to go into HoneyBook and put it in as um, like a Calendly like video type thing. Yes. Um, going forward, which I think I'm really excited for. I've actually got two um, count or Zoom calls with um, past brides scheduled for like next week, and I'm excited about it. I'm a little nervous I'm about it, but like, yeah. Um, so I've got all my questions kind of rolled out and um, excited to kind of. You'll be great. I get, I have gotten nervous before, even like doing interviews for customer, like for clients, mm-hmm. I'm interviewing there. It's yeah, it's just awkward sometimes. So yeah. you did the right thing. Like having your questions prepped before is like the best thing you can do. And shutting up is the other best thing you can do. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> do you have any like pre-written questions that kind of help out with testimonials or anything along those lines? Yes. I can't remember what format they're in. They're either in a blog or I say them in a video, but I'll make sure to um, get that link to you because awesome. yeah, I think that was one of the hard things too. When I was starting um, interviewing clients, I was like, what do I ask? Like, what do you even say? So um, yeah, we'll get you hooked up. Perfect. We will definitely make sure that is linked in the show notes below, guys. All right, Ashlyn, I have one last question for you. And this is kind of like my favorite question of all times. And that is, if you could describe yourself as a plant, what plant would it be? I gotta say my favorite plant is a hydrangea um, because I'm Southern. (laughs) There, I guess, I don't know, the stereotype at least is that they're Southern. Oh, I absolutely love that. Um, it's kind of funny because up here in North Dakota, we say it a little bit different. We'll say hydrangea, like we enunciate it a little bit off, um, which kind of bugs me because when I was in, grew up in Kansas, that's not how we said it, but now it's like the only way that I can say it. So, um, but what I love about hydrangeas is, is that they, like you said, they're in the shade, they're really showy, but, and they're beautiful. They're so gorgeous. But if you cut them um, and dry them out, they last forever. And I think that that has a little bit of correlation um, with what you do as a copywriter, um, that your words really can last a long time and really tell the story. So I love that you said that um, because I think it's very fitting. All right. Well, it has been so much fun talking with you today. And um, I'm so excited that we were able to get you on one of the very first uh, episodes of the podcast. So thank you so much. Um, Where can everyone kind of find you online and where can they go if they want more resources on copywriting and kind of using their words to kind of get their message across? Yes. And Chelsea, I'm so honored. Like, thank you for asking me to um, help you out with this. Uh, Ashlyn Writes is my website, ashlynwrites.com, writes like with your hand. And then um, youtube.com slash Ashlyn Writes is where a lot of those tutorials we kind of referenced are. And I like Instagram, the best of all social media. So um, my handle is at Ashlyn S. Carter. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, That is it for this episode, guys. We will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wise Photographer Podcast. Dive into the show's notes for this episode and all past episodes at www.thewisephotographer.com. If you love the show, share it with a friend. Thanks for tuning in, you wise photographer, you.